Hey there, marketing research students and SPSS users. In this brief exercise, we're going to report summary statistics into a single graphic about multiple different variables. In this particular instance, we're going to be using the Spring 2014 Craft Beer 200 record random subset data set, the same set we've been using for all the previous videos. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to create a single chart inside the SPSS graphics interface. Uh, and this chart is going to report the average value for six different subjective knowledge questions about craft beer. So in our data set here, we have six different subjective knowledge about craft beer. One of the questions being, I know quite a bit about craft beer. Uh, among my circle of friends, I'd be considered to be one of the more knowledgeable about craft beer. And I know the difference between craft beer and non-craft beer as well as some other questions. All of these questions were asked on a Likert scale, ranging from one to five, five being strongly agree. How we do this is we can go to graphs and go to chart builder. And we're going to go make a simple bar chart. Now the trick here is that we want the average value for each of these six different variables reported. So there should be six bars on our chart, each bar representing the average value for each one of these uh, variables. So if we grab our subjective knowledge questions, I see all six of them right here. I can also right click to display variable names to see them by their actual name. So what I could do here is I can drag the subjective knowledge question over into the y-axis. What happens if I drag in an additional one? It adds in addition, an additional column uh, statistic here. I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. It's easiest to do this in all one big grab. So let's go ahead and create a simple bar chart again. But this time, instead of dragging them one at a time, and depending on some of the older versions of software and possibly Mac versions, the dragging one at a time may simply not work. So I, I do know that from almost all recent versions of SPSS, if you shift grab, so we're selecting all of these subjective knowledge questions at once, we're dragging them all at one time into the y-axis, and notice when it, the box turns red, there's going to be this little additional box with a plus. Let's release it, and a menu pops up. And I know we're tempted to just skip over menus, not pay attention to what they say, but let's read what this actually says here. The values from your variables will be used to summarize your data. Okay, good. The names of each variable will be used as categories in the chart. So the categories will be along the, the x-axis, and the values of the variable will be used to summarize the data along the y. Values are rep represented by a special summary variable assigned to the y-axis. Variables that define categories are represented by a special index variable. That's what goes along the x. So our index category labels are the six questions. One, two, three, four, five, six. So go ahead and hit OK there. Notice here that we see that we're going to have more additional options. So there should be six bars. It just doesn't show them in the preview pane. Let's not worry about that. And quickly, let's scroll over to the element properties pane and notice something here. If we click on the bar, we're used to selecting the statistic menu here if we want to change instead of grabbing the media, I mean, we might want to grab the median, the mode, min, max, summation, percentage. But I want to draw your attention to something important. We now have six different columns. So you could ask for the median of one variable, the mean of another, the mode of another. And what's important here is if you only select the median for one of them, you're only going to get the median for one, not for all. So be very careful about what you're asking for. All right, but in our case, we're happy with the average value, so we don't need to do anything. Let's go ahead and click OK and run this. And sure enough, we get our average values here. Now that we've actually run our average values, we could go back and, and put these into a proper order. For example, we know for a fact now that the differences between craft and non-craft beers scored the highest, so we might want to put this, this bar over to the far left while I really don't understand much about craft beer, should be on the far right, and then we perhaps put these numeric values all in sequence. How we do that is if we go to Graph, Chart Builder, under the x-axis element properties, you'll notice that we have the ability to recategorize variables. So for example, I know the difference between craft beer and non-craft beer, I can move it all the way to the top, hit apply, if I run this again, I didn't reorganize all of them, I just organized the one, but it illustrates the general point. 
Looking at this chart, I'm going to double click in. And what I'd like to do here is I, I would like to also have the actual values of the average listed inside each one of these bars. So I'm going to right click inside the bars and I'm going to scroll down and show the data labels. Here's my average for each one of these bars, but rounded to the nearest whole number. It's not that helpful. We probably want to see at least one decimal point here. So when our property menu pops up, let's go to number format. And right here it'll say decimal places. Let's add one additional decimal point and hit apply. Sure enough, there we go. In addition, we can click on data value, value labels. Instead of the label position being automatic, we could also click custom and push them all along the top edge of the bars. That serves us a little better here. In addition, we probably recognize that each one of these uh, x-axis labels is a little too long. I probably want to click into each one of these and shorten it in some way. I might shorten this to example for to difference craft and non-craft. And I would do that, I would shorten this for each single one of these, or possibly leave it almost the, the whole sentence, but maybe dropping the subjective knowledge part in the front. Depending on who my audience would be, I would make the proper choice. Close this out. Sure enough, OK, we've improved uh, the quality of our chart. Again, we could reorganize this even a little better to make the values uh, even more meaningful and easier to interpret. I want to show you one other thing, though. Another survival strategy when we're dealing with SPSS is realizing that sometimes it might be easier for you to solve a task using Excel. <clears throat> in, this, in this case, let's see if we can replicate a very similar looking uh, chart, but this time generating the data first in SPSS, pasting it into Excel, and then using Excel's tool to create these charts. So another way, a way to do this would be go to Analyze, Descriptives, and this time we'll go to Descriptive Statistics. Let's go ahead and grab our six subjective knowledge questions. Under Options, let's ask just for the mean. We just need the average values. And then under Display Order, we actually have a nice little option here that says it'll order these six variables by descending mean values. So highest value first, lowest value last. That's really convenient. Let's hit Continue here. And let's go ahead and hit OK and run this. Here's our descriptive table. We click here into it and we right click. We can copy special. In this case, I'm going to copy it as an Excel worksheet. Now, depending on the version of Excel that you're, I'm sorry, the version of SPSS that you're working with, you may not see the Excel worksheet option, but in most cases, copying them as a other, another standard rich text or metafile option should work okay. Now we're going to open up Excel. Now we have a blank Excel worksheet. I should be able to paste these values right in. I'm hitting Control V and just simply pasting the values in. And sure enough, it pasted. I'm going to shrink this a little bit so it's a little easier for us to see. OK. So we've pasted our table into Excel. Notice that I don't need the end column here to, do, to build my chart. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now. And here's my six different questions, and here's the mean values right next to them. In this case, I should be able to grab just this box here, not the top part where it says mean or below, just these values. I should be able to say insert, column. I should be able to make a simple 2D column chart here. Sure enough, while it certainly needs a little bit of additional formatting and love, we replicate the chart that we had in SPSS, now in Excel. For those of you who are more comfortable and used to using Excel, in some cases, it might be more appropriate for you to produce summary statistics using the frequencies or descriptive statistics toolbox in SPSS, drop the data over into Excel, and then create your charts. The downside, of course, would be that if for some reason you realize you made a mistake, you have a bunch of additional steps to make. Whereas in SPSS, if you save the syntax, you can replicate those charts instantaneously um, under a variety of different circumstances. But this is one survival technique that has helped many people uh, utilize SPSS. And SPSS's uh, graphical interface isn't always the most powerful thing in the world or the most easy to use. So sometimes building something in Excel can be a quick way to solve a task. 
Okay, SPSS users, I'll see you back for another video later.